In this segment, we're going to talk about light output from a variety of sources over life. That's going to involve two ideas. The first, lumen maintenance. How much light does a lighting system retain over its life? And the second will be life. With traditional sources, we'll be talking about rated average life. With LEDs, we'll talk about useful life. Let's start with rated average life for traditional lamps. Rated average life for a traditional lamp is that point where 50% of the lamps have failed. That's considered rated average life or 100% of the life expectancy of a light source. So when we think about measuring the rated average life, we have to look at the metrics. And two organizations have provided us with the metrics for rated average life, ANSI, the American National Standards Institute, and the IESNA, the Illuminating Engineering Society of North America. They have a variety of LMs, lighting metrics, that help us to discern what the rated average life procedures are for fluorescent, HID, and filament sources. Now for LEDs, it's different. LEDs do not yet have a metric for rated average life. With an LED then, we talk about useful life. And useful life for an LED is defined as the point at which it reaches 70% of its original light output, sometimes referred to as L70. For an LED, however, we use a metric called LM80. LM80 basically is the procedure, the test procedure, to figure out how long an LED will take to reach L70. Recently, TM21 was added. That's a specific mathematical formula to help us discern when that LED reaches average rated life. Now, if we take a look at what they're measuring, it's this. It's the LED device, the assembly, or this, the LED itself, not the finished product, not the lamp, not the luminaire. The Philips brand promise is different. Philips basically uses B50 L70. It takes into account LM80 and the LED assembly, but it then looks at all the components that are in a lamp or in a luminaire and says, we're going to take into account when these might fail. That's B50 L70. 50% of all of these devices will still be producing 70% of their initial light output at the rated life on the packaging. So let's suppose that we applied L70 to traditional light sources. Here's a quartz metal halide probe start which reaches L70 at 7,000 hours and here is a pulse start metal halide that reaches L70 at 8,000 hours even though both are rated average life of 20,000 hours. What happens if we apply L70 to fluorescent systems? Well, with a T5HO and with a T8, we would never reach L70. In fact, L95 would be more like it at end of life. This is a quartz metal halide high bay, and you can upgrade it with ceramic discharge metal halide all start, be L70 at end of life. Or you can replace that high bay with an LED high bay, and again, L70 at end of life. Or if it's more appropriate, you can put in a T5HO or a high bay high lumen T8 system and be L90, L95 at end of life. The most important thing is to identify what your customer needs, what the environment will support, and then pick the most appropriate source for the application.